Hello, this is a presentation on fixture and binder performance tests, a very brief overview of each of these tests. First, I'd like to start with the dynamic modulus or complex modulus test. Uh, the main reason why we run this test on asphalt mixtures is to, is to get their linear viscoelastic behavior. And also this linear viscoelastic behavior is helpful uh, uh, for us to um, get get a sense of the fatigue and rutting performance of these uh, the asphalt mixtures, especially if you would like to compare it to asphalt mixtures relative to their stiffness as well as their fatigue and rutting behavior. This is useful. Um, asphalt mixture dynamic modulus test. Before we start with the dynam uh, asphalt mixture, we'd like to talk about the dynamic modulus itself. Um, in a dynamic modulus test, we apply a cyclic stress, then measure the corresponding strain. For an elastic material, if you run this test at T is equal to 0 degrees Celsius, temperature is equal to 0 degrees Celsius, uh, we would get, let's say, in a number of 100 psi, which is peak to peak. From, from here to here is your peak to peak 100 psi in this graph. And from peak to peak for the strain, it's about 500. If you look at the second axis, 500 and minus 6 uh, strain, which is which corresponds to about 500 micro strain. This would be your modulus, uh, 198,000 uh, approximately uh, psi. Uh, if you run this test on an elastic material, purely elastic material, at 20 degrees Celsius, at a different temperature, at a higher temperature, the modulus will not change. However, asphalt mixtures, this is different. Um, the stiffness decreases as the temperature increases. The stiffness or dynamic modulus, I'm using this interchangeably, as the loading frequency increases. So what is loading frequency? Loading frequency is the um, when we have a cyclic test, frequency is 1 over delta t, delta t being the period of the cycle. And uh, that's your frequency, that it, this is related to the speed. The higher the speed, the, and the speed of the traffic, the higher the speed, the, uh, the more the frequency is going to be. 2.6 million PSI versus 1 million PSI. So from going from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. So if we keep the temperature constant but decrease the frequency, we will see an even further decrease in dynamic modulus. We can see we are keeping the stress constant. The micro strain, the measured strain increases as a result. You have a, a decrease in dynamic modulus. So ESTAR testing, laboratory testing, typically currently, right now it's August 2015 when I recorded this, uh, we are using ash 2 t 342 um, recommended temperatures um, minus 10, 10, 21, 37, 54 degrees Celsius. Recommended frequencies of testing, and we typically run three replicates to eliminate or minimize the sample to sample variability. And this is a typical um, testing device that we use to run this test. You can see the sample, cylindrical sample, we mount uh, LVDTs around around the sample, three of them typically get an average of the strains to, um, then, which is used in dynamic modulus calculation. So if you look at the E-star data, raw data that we would get from a dynamic modulus test, you will see that the frequency in the columns, temperature in the rows, if you look at upper left, which is the highest frequency, lowest temperature, you have 2.8 million PSI modulus. If you look at the right, lower right portion, corner, you would see only 25,000. There's a big difference in dynamic modulus. And when you go from 20 to 54 degrees Celsius, and when we go from 25 hertz to 0 0.1 theta, this table right here, in a graph, in the horizontal axis, you have frequency, vertical axis, you have dynamic modulus. You see something like this. These um, are minus 10 degrees Celsius data. These are 4 degrees Celsius data. These are 21 degrees Celsius data. 
these are 37 degrees Celsius data. Now, if I keep one of the data constant and start moving the other to left and right, such that I have a smooth curve, smooth sigmoidal curve in this particular case, I can fit a equation I can fit an equation to this smooth curve. If I fit an equation to this smooth curve, it will be easier to figure out E star at different frequencies. But how we need to keep track of how much we shift left and right. And this shift is, by the way, the horizontal axis is in logarithmic space, vertical axis in is in also logarithmic space. So when you shift, even though we are uh, moving this is actually multiplication of frequency with a constant a of t we call it shift factor constant so we have reduced frequency is equal to frequency times this shift factor and this shift factor is nothing but the logarithm of the distance between here and here so the e star at different temperatures and frequencies very easily one thing i'd like to mention is that um, when we when we look at this dynamic modulus master curve typically um, when you look at two different mixtures with you know these idealized mixtures somewhat idealized mixtures mixture a versus mixture b uh, at the right side of this dynamic modulus curve is the high temperature high frequency and low temperature zone this corresponds to high temperature high frequency and low temperature zone high frequency corresponds to high speed so high vehicle speed we would like to have typically relatively soft materials not very soft but relatively soft materials relatively soft materials are usually more flexible uh, I'd like to underline usually usually more flexible and um, uh, give better fatigue resistance on the other hand if you look at the lower left side of the curve um, that corresponds to high temperature and low frequency low speed uh, like this little turtle right here we would like to have higher modulus at this zone we would like to have a stiffer material stiffer uh, mixture which will resist rusting better so once we have these b1 b2 b4 uh, b3 b4 a1 a2 and reference t reference so what are these um, these are the constant first four are the constants of the sigmoid i showed earlier a1 a2 are the constants of the polynomial curve that we fit to the shift fact um, a of t we start at any temperature and frequency can be computed for example at any temperature of t is equal to 17.5 and 8.4 hertz what would be the e star first step is calculation of shift factor coefficient for this temperature if we plug this uh, in this equation uh, a1 and a2 are unknown at your reference reference temperature is known in the previous example it was 21 degree celsius you get this shift factor multiply the shift factor by the frequency in this case for example 8.4 hertz you would get the reduced frequency and finally plug in this reduced frequency in the e star equation which is a sigmoid equation in logarithmic space to figure out what in the e now i'd like to move to asphalt binder dynamic shear modulus this is linear scholastic behavior of asphalt binder Principally, it is very similar to dynamic modulus of asphalt mixture. In this particular case, we have, uh, I'm showing a parallel plate geometry, which is very common in asphalt, mix asphalt binder testing. Asphalt binder is placed in between two parallel plates and torque is applied, cyclic torque is applied. Just like in the dynamic modulus for mixtures, we apply stress or strain depending on the, uh, depending on the machine that you use uh, and we measure the shear strain basically shear stress peak divided by shear strain peak gives us the g star which is the absolute value of the dynamic shear modulus 
Um, I'm not going into the details of complex modulus complex space. This presentation is targeted for very basic, in, you know, introductory graduate students who just got out of the undergrad and trying to learn a little bit of how, about asphalt and never heard about asphalt uh, mixture behavior and all that. So principally my new students. Anyway, so that's the goal. Uh, if they if they take my bituminous materials class, they will be learning a lot more, obviously, on the details. Anyway, dynamic shear uh, modulus master curve, just like the mixture. Uh, this is just two examples. Example dynamic modulus mixture, dynamic modulus master curves. Uh, of uh, of very to our surprise, there were two different mixtures that uh, we tried, and it was a very very big difference. Um, their mix designs are the same, and basically. The only difference was the way the additive, there was a special additive we added and tried and made very different dynamic modules, which you can see. Anyway, um, next I'd like to talk about indirect tensile strength test. This is this test is used for low temperature crack, crack characterization. We have a cylindrical sample, we load it in the diameter direction, and this is a monotonic test um, run at my. Um, low temperatures such as minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius in our lab we typically run at minus 10 and uh, we look at the peak load and then from the peak load calculate peak stress Here's, here are two videos of uh, two tests on two different mixtures the one on the left there is there is a brittle mixture on the right ductile mixture this turned out to be a rubber modified asphalt uh, no advertisement here, but you know in this particular case, this is how it how it happened. You can see um, the difference between the load versus displacement curve. When you look at this, you have a higher peak, higher strength in the left side brittle curve. On the right side, you have a little bit lower strength. However, if you look at the load displacement curve and or the area under the um, this load displacement curve, which is which corresponds to kind of energy. It's, it's actually work, but um, corresponds to energy. So you need a lot more energy here to uh, fail the sample completely as compared to this one. However, you need uh, more st stress to fail the sample than this one. So advantages, disadvantages, both, both places. Next, I'd like to talk about this disc shape compact tension test for low temperature cracking. We kind of like this test. This is, um, this is the Pac-Man test that I'd like to call it. Um, we have a special geometry, um, a lot of credit on this one goes to your University of Illinois uh, group. Um, you have uh, monotonic loading applied in the vertical direction uh, and the constant um, displacement mode is, uh, constant displacement mode is uh, fixed here and, and then the strength is calculated. Um, load displacement curve is uh, that similar to indirect tensile strength. These are two typical uh, test results that uh, that we can see. That's it. Just a brief overview of some of the tests that uh, and as I said these are for my new students. If you are not my student and you like it, great. If you don't like it, ask your professor. Thanks.